minus 30. Flight tanks configured for flight. Fifteen. Ten. Nine. Nine eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. And liftoff of Grace follow-on, continuing the legacy of the Grace mission of tracking the movement of water across our planet. Eagles pitching downrange. Stage one props nominal. Nominal. GC copies will go. GC copies will go. All right, we have a lift off, Frankie. Sphere out here. Vehicles experience maximum dynamic pressure. So we just went through max Q. Everything is looking good. The next stage is the main engine cutoff. and, and uh, be deployed. You can see an image now from a rocket image, actually. So the main engine cutoff will be in 15 seconds. Stage separation confirmed. And stage separation has been confirmed. So the first stage was deployed. You can see an image from the second stage. Impact ignition. Stage one AFTS has saved. So it's everything is nominal. Let's see separation, the fairing separation successfully, and you can see the Grace Fallon and the Iridium spacecraft in the picture there. Stage two is following a nominal trajectory. So everything's going nominal. an image of the, se the second stage. So, so the second engine will uh, will burn for approximately eight minutes. Um, that will get the uh, the second stage and the uh, both the iridium and, and grace follow on 
uh, stack up to the point where Grace Follow-On will be separated from, from that stack. And um, then the launch vehicle, the second stage, will continue on and deploy the, gr the Iridium satellites um, after another burn, actually. All right. So we have eight minutes until the uh, second engine cutoff. Correct. So we, we're, we're going to take some time to introduce folks to some of the members of the team. While we wait for the end of the engine burn, we thought we would be able to introduce you to some of the project managers, Phil Morton of JPL and German research manager, project manager Frank Fleckner. They're both in the SpaceX control room at Vandenberg right now. They're monitoring this launch. But we did talk to them earlier about their roles and the stories they tell us about the relationship between the two teams they tell us is a partnership that goes way back. The data is available and needs to continue to be available and how do you use it in a way that helps or benefits where you live specifically because you can really track right to where you live what the future might be like. There are tools now to monitor and estimate what the future might be like given the trends that we see. I have the responsibility for the mission with NASA. Uh, that's sort of the way a project manager role is defined. So my responsibility is that the mission comes together and operates successfully. I have a counterpart, uh, Dr. Frank Fleckner, uh, who's at GFZ in Germany. I was already the co-PI of the GRACE mission and I became the GFZ, GFZ, project manager for all the German contributions to the mission. He's a pleasure to work with. He's very knowledgeable on the science data from GRACE. We talk weekly, if not more. It's a pleasure to work with somebody that uh, you can have a straight conversation with. I know Phil already from the GRACE project from 98, 99, say six years ago when we started to implement GRACE follow-on. I was very happy to see Phil again to be the GPL GRACE follow-on project manager because I know him so long and it's easy to talk with him and, and it's a really good friendship over the years. We've taken the best of their expertise, uh, combined it with the best of ours. You put these groups of people together, you, you want to make sure that we're all heading down the same path, heading towards the same goals. Everybody's working so closely together. We are seamless between the teams. It really has worked out well. We are one Grace family. We know each other since 1908. That's 20 years. Yeah. And so we all get older uh, during the Grace lifetime. And it's a great uh, opportunity to run into a Grace follow-on mission with many of these old friends. So as we're standing by for the end of the second engine burn, the other things that we're focusing on is, is what happens after the second engine burn is done. What happens after that? So the first thing that happens is that the uh, GRACE follow-on satellites are separated. They're, they're released from, from the multi-satellite dispenser. And we have some video that we can actually show to sure. illustrate what we're talking so about. So as you then. see here, this animation shows uh -huh. the, the GRACE follow-on two satellites being separated. The first thing we want to do is make communication and make sure that we have contact with the spacecraft. So we release this S-band antenna uh, that allows us to have uh, communication. But the spacecraft at this stage are a little wobbly, uh, I would say. Uh, so they would have to adjust the, the uh, internal uh, uh, propulsion system will make adjustments because we want the spacecraft to come in in a um, uh, in what we call a safe mode which points the solar arrays up to the sun and the antenna towards earth um, and that will take a few minutes and then the first pass is going to be over uh, McMurdo uh, station in Antarctica. So that is the first opportunity that we have communication with the satellite? That is the first opportunity. Uh, we anticipate that we would have contact with both spacecraft at that point, but mm -hmm. if that doesn't happen because of uh, uh, any delay in the stability of the spacecraft, then we have another opportunity in another 45 minutes. 
what kind of communication are we talking about? Is it just a ping saying, I'm here, I'm alive? We, we will or? actually get um, a, a health report from the spacecraft that tells us uh, the power condition, the com computer status, the communication condition, uh, pretty much everything that, that we need to know about the health of, of the spacecraft at that point. All right. So how far off are we from main engine cutoff then? Main engine cutoff uh, occurs uh, in about, um, it looks like in about uh, ten, eight, nine minutes. Eight, nine minutes. Okay. So we are standing by. Cook, LOS expected. Tico. Nominal parking orbit insertion. Did we lose the feed from uh, the are launch we, vehicle? So we are looking for second engine cutoff and a signal for second engine cutoff, and that's a critical period because that is when the satellites will be deployed. Correct. This, the separation will occur right after uh, main engine cutoff. Um, right after the main engine cutoff, uh, we should we will be getting confirmation um, of separation from the launch vehicle, actually. So you'll be hearing it from the team? Correct, oh. that they had successful uh, separation. And then after that, uh, in about 10 seconds, and then after that we will uh, wait for establishing communications over McMurdo. Will we be able to actually see the satellites deploy? Uh, there's a good view, actually. Um, um, we're hoping that we'll be able to get a glimpse of the GRACE, Grace follow-on uh, satellite. GRACE payload deploy confirmed. The deployment of the GRACE follow-on spacecraft was yeah. deployed. That's confirmed. Deployed successfully.